In our first video we looked at the uh, current source and in this video we're going to take a look at the differential amplifier. So we're going to add two transistors. Um, before we had a 1K resistor to, to uh, bypass all of this stuff, just a load here, a 1K resistor. We'll pull that out. We'll add the two transistors and a 15K and we'll see what this part here does. So I hope you can see this. Um, I have added uh, two transistors and I've wired them such that their emitters are tied together and they're tied to the collector of the first transistor so the current is being pulled uh, by the first transistor it's a constant current source and its emitter is pulling current that will go through these two uh, emitters and their collectors are tied to different things so one of the collectors is tied to plus 12 through a 15k resistor and one of the collectors is tied to plus 12 hardwired. So that's exactly what we what we have here in the uh, in the circuit, if you remember. So we have two inputs on the bases. Uh, they're on these orange wires here. So this is the positive uh, input, and this is the negative input. All right. So uh, let's see what this thing is going to do. Okay. First of all. Uh, this thing is plus or minus 12 volts. So if we take the minus rail and we ground it, let's just do that. So we'll put that onto ground. So now we have the negative input uh, tied to ground. And we have the um, positive input just floating. Uh, so let's, let's see what's going on there. Let's... Um... Oh, sorry. Everything's going crazy here. All right, so let's take a look at what's going on voltage-wise in the circuit. Uh, I'll pan back out so we can see the see the voltmeter. So currently we have uh, this is ground, so we have uh, plus 12, we have minus 12, and we have grounded the input, zero, so let's take a look at what those two emitters, what voltage those two emitters are at. And those two emitters are right here. So they're at minus 0.58 volts. So does that make sense? We have the minus input tied to ground. We have a constant current source. We have a, a voltage of base to emitter dropped. So we'll have the emitter, a diode drop below the base. So if the base is at zero, the emitter is going to be at minus 0 0.6. And we're here at minus 0 0.587. So that makes sense. Okay? So we have a constant current source. The constant current is going somewhere. It's either going through one of the transistors or both of the transistors. Um, so let's put current meters on those two legs. One through the uh, 15K resistor and one through this wire. And we'll measure those two currents and we'll see what happens to those two currents. All right, so I've disconnected the collector that's hardware and I've disconnected the collector that has that 15K resistor. And now I'm going to insert some uh, measurement. We're gonna put in a current, uh, current measurement on the, uh, on the 15K. We'll connect that here to the 15K and we'll, collect, we'll connect a uh, let's see which wire, which wire, which wire, this wire. So we'll connect a current so a current meter to the uh, collector that's that's hardwired. All right. So we will go up here to the top where we have the top meter is going to be the current through the um, 15k side, the plus side and the current on the bottom meter is going to be the current through the collector that's hardwired so that's the minus input right so if we take the right now the input is floating and if i put some voltage on the plus signal i'm going to put five volts on the on the plus signal okay so here's five volts and I think you can see that now the 5 volts is turning on that transistor that's on the plus input side. 
And so all of the current now is going to be flowing through that transistor. It's going to be going through that 15K resistor. If we remove the biasing from the plus input, then they swap positions. Now all of the current is going through the minus input transistor, the one that's hardwired, collector is hardwired to plus 12. So plus 5, open. Plus 5, open. So you can see we have 131 milliamps and 131 milliamps, um, depending on which transistor is on. But the constant current keeps the total um, current the same. So if I ground the plus input, I don't know what's going to happen, but we will try. Oh, my fingers, my fat fingers are in the way. Uh, here we go. Ah, so now we have part of the current going through one transistor and part of the current going through the other transistor. So we have 55 milliamps going through the plus side and we have 75 milliamps going through the minus side. We still have a total of 131 milliamps, but part of the current's going through one and part of the current's going through the other. Now, why aren't they the same? Well, that's because those two transistors aren't identical. They're VBE drops, they're betas, uh, their gain stages, um, things like that are a little bit different. So if you had a perfectly matched transistor, perfectly matched, then you'd get um, the same amount of current through both. You'd get half of 131 milliamps. Um, when you're building an IC, you have control over the diodes and the transistors. You can make them kind of all the same, kind of almost equal. Um, but not quite. So you have to do a little bit of more work to make it, try to make sure everything is matched or change the circuit a little bit. But for our little simple little op-amp circuit, this is going to be fine. Um, when both inputs are ground, you get about half and half current split. And when one side is higher than the other, that's where the current goes. Um, so we've seen that with this differential amplifier is, is operating. Uh, kind of to a crude extent, it's either through one transistor or through the other transistor or through both transistors. Um, so that's the point of the differential amplifier. And we'll go to the next stage, which is trying to take that signal and do something with it and creating an output. Okay, let's recap here. Um, we had these two transistors. I put a current meter in this leg here and I put a current meter in this leg here. And we watched those two currents in those two different sides. And when the positive and the negative were both grounded, we had about equal amounts of current going through both sides. When the positive was higher than the negative, when it was five volts and the ground was zero, we had all of the current going through this side. And when we had the positive floating, it allowed this transistor still to be on because it was zero volts, zero, there's still current flowing from zero to minus 12. So this transistor stayed on and all of the current was flowing over in this leg. So we can say this differential amplifier, uh, depending on the voltages on the input, the current will either throw for this transistor or this transistor, but the total current, you know, A plus B, always stays the same because of this current source down here, right?